and welcome back to our live Wednesday night edition of Point of Order on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown. And as always, we are pleased to welcome back our guest host of the series, Miss Sarah Big Sarah. Welcome back. Long time no see. I know. Long time no see. How are you? I am fantastic. Could not do better. We have been Amazing. off. We were off last week because it was Canada Day and we just wanted to take a week off because we reset, refocus, and try to get back into the swing of things in July. Uh, we will be doing that at the end of this month as well because it's my birthday month. So at the end of this month, I will be taking a week off at the end of the month. So we will not have any shows, but we will not be doing And I'm on vacation. There so. you go. So we're both off the last week of July. But Sarah, 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 um, yes. politics over the last two weeks have been uh, fun, exciting powerful uh, uh as we usually say just for transparency's sake uh sarah is working on a leadership campaign so we are not going to be talking about the ucp leadership if you want to talk about if you want to listen to a conversation about that tune in next monday when we talk sit down and talk to spencer bennett uh, about the status of the ah. ucp leadership race with him him and i are going to digest who the candidates are his views on who they are but i want to start with this sarah the big news in the last i think 48 hours is patrick brown being disqualified mm -hmm. by the conservative party of canada uh to run in the current conservative party of canada leadership race are you shocked? <laughs> oh, shocked no. I am. Oh, no. no. <laughs> so, 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 sorry. It's been a long two weeks, everyone. I do apologize right sorry. here, right now. I've been working extremely late all week. So here's the thing. Um, you know, when Michelle was like, oh, I might run. I'm leaving the campaign. Little red flags starting yep. to show up and we're like uh oh when michelle jumps ship something is just about to happen and then you know it's a weird flex when your camp when your staffers are <laughs> leaking the information <laughs> well and that's what i i, and, I find uh, that very funny because Patrick Brown, last night, he released a press statement basically saying, Pierre Polyev's fault for me getting disqualified. I'm going to challenge this, even though there's no rules in the leadership rules saying you can challenge the disqualification, but he was going to challenge it anyway. And he's gotten a lawyer who, uh, for for transparency's sake, and I, I, I'm not sure if this is true. I, I saw this on Twitter, but I believe the source is accurate. David Aiken yeah. of the... Global News uh, announced or released that the lawyer that they got, the Patrick Brown campaign that they got, is the same lawyer that Alex Jones of, yes, that Alex Jones down in the States got when he was sued by the Sandy Hook uh, parents. No, they can't. Well, unless he has passed the bar here. He so I'm going to have to let... I'm going to have to look at David Atkins' uh, account. Uh, see, I didn't hear that. But what, what's interesting in that case is that there's, is it now five or three city councillors that are asking for five an audit? And four on, and the deputy mayor. Uh, yeah. So, my dudes, here's campaigning 101. And that, that, that applies for everybody out there that is, you know, trying to campaign. You okay? I, I'm sure. gonna. I apologize right here, right now. I'm gonna read the quote. It is not Alex Jones. Yeah. It's Alex Smith. I got that wrong. So please ignore the last statement that I just made. It's the Patrick okay. Brown campaign has signed up lawyer Marie Hennen. Yes, her. I don't know who that means. Uh, I'm assuming Marie Hennen. H e i n e n. Uh, with her associate Alex Smith co-signed the letter just sent to the CPC headquarters that Brown indeed intends to appeal the LEOC's decision to boot him from the CPC leader. So I did read that wrong. I was not wearing my glasses, so I do apologize. The lawyer that he did hire does not have any connection to the Alex Jones from the States. I read something incorrectly, so I'm just going to put that on the record right here, right now. So Mary I Hennen, <laughs> um, do you, we remember a long time ago uh 
um, there was a CBC dude. What's his name? The radio guy. Shoot. Rex Murphy? No. He sexually assaulted several oh, women. Oh, Gian Gomoshi or whatever. Gomoshi. Yeah. She was his lawyer. So um, she's a very, very prominent, high profile lawyer, very effective at what she does. Um, but at the end of the day, if the city council and the deputy mayor is sending out red flags, like something needs to be done. Yeah, I agree. Like without knowing fully everything, there's rumors everyone what's going on right now. But I think that a pause to look into it is smart. And, you know, they can't have as many conversations as they want with party. But party seems like they've made their opinion. So here's the thing. When you're campaigning for a party leadership, you got to make sure that any office that your candidate is associated with is not involved with the campaign during business hours. Mm -hmm. as number one and you got to make sure that there's an excellent Chinese wall between the campaign manager and the elected officials office because you need to be you need to keep both separate let's say if I'm running a campaign and a federal MP hired me to run his campaign I'm not allowed to talk to his staff about constituency business. I can't. You know, anything under day to day or anything like that, you cannot do that. So what I've seen from the allegations is that some staffers allegedly from Mayor Brown's office were a working on Brampton's taxpayer's time. And two, there is a $659,000 contract that was given to someone in the campaign's entourage. So somebody within the office or within the campaign said, that's not cool. So I know a lot of people right now are gonna be like, okay, this is related to the brethren or this is related to this. And you know, all the crazy dark stuff we're seeing on Twitter these days. I can't speak to that. I. You and know, at, and at the same rumors. time, we still don't know what the actual allegations are, right? We exactly. have these rumors. <laughs> the LEOC is saying we are not taking any media interview request, even though the president of the Conservative Party of Canada is plastered on every single uh, outlet right now with CBC, CTV. Uh, I think he did an interview with Global. I'm not like I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know he's been yeah. out there talking to, and he's been saying no, it wasn't from Pierre's team. It was actually an internal uh, issue that came up, and the internal people brought it forward to the Elections Canada finance people. And the CPC is saying, well, we're going to give it to the Elections Canada to investigate. But from now on, he is no longer a candidate for this leadership. So we you don't know, know what the full uh, allegation is. We don't know. And we hear rumors. And if Mr. Brown, like, we're going to see if he goes to court with that. We're going to see if there's going to be a gag order on it or not. Who knows? Um, but again, we'll, we'll see. Like, maybe he could be successful. It might be a nothing burger or the staffer really knows what they're doing. Is this the man uh, who just can't catch a break? Or is this man so incompetent at his job? And don't get me wrong. He probably was a smart politician at one time because you don't get to where you are without being semi-politically astute in doing what you need to do. Because if you remember, Patrick Brown was an MP. Well, I think actually, sorry, Patrick Brown was no. a counselor then a member of parliament, then uh, uh, the leader of the Ontario yeah. Progressive Conservatives, then an MPP, then got kicked out as an MPP, then was running for the region of the ch regional chair of Brampton, which is the region yeah. around Brampton. Doug Ford came in and said, no, we're no longer having that as an elected chair. Got that cut. He said, okay, I'm going to run against the sitting liberal incumbent mayor of Brampton. 
won that seat, decided after two years of doing that, he no longer wants or three and a half, almost four years of that. He wants to become prime minister again. Can this man not catch a break or is this man so incompetent that he can't function properly when it comes to politics? It's a mix, I think it's a mix of both. I also see the Brampton uh, Merrill's exercise as a rehabilitation to his image because his image was extremely, extremely damaged about what happened um, with Ontario PC and the allegations and what, you know, forced them out. Um, and Brem, you know, Brempton was a rehabilitation, image rehabilitation exercise to see if he still, you know, I think that he was trying to see if he still had it, if he could manage, you know, city and, you know, try to do something good. But I think that when you're surrounding yourself by people that will not be challenging your views and will not be challenging your actions every single day, that's when you fall into an echo chamber and that's where you lose the plot. And we've seen that here in Alberta on the provincial level as well. So I think that there's a lot of elements that we need to consider here. But if you ask me, he should just be out of politics. I think he's... It no, has to be done now, done. right? Like, I, I know he, he's appealing this because I think he wants to... He thinks he still has a chance of winning this leadership race. I just don't know where that comes from. Because if you get kicked out of your party and you still say you want to run for that party and you want to be the leader of that party, does that not like tell you that maybe who you are is not a great fit for that party anymore after they've kicked you out after they think you, uh, you, oh, they I guess you Rod out. Sherman. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Chinese wall with the UCP leadership race. The Mrs. Uh, I'm baby. just joking. <laughs> I know. No, Raj. I love Raj. I'm sorry, Raj. I had to. I I just had to. It's just an easy one. Um, but he's done. He's lost now all credibility. That <laughs> all the credibility he managed to rebuild in the past three four years is just. If those allegations are true, he's done. He cannot recover from this he's what 45 48 now let's be honest that's what i said about the sexual allegations when he was kicked out as the leader of the progressive conservatives as well and i, I i'm gonna I, I need to put this on record as well that attack back in 2015 or 2018 when he was turfed as leader of the progressive conservatives came from an inside source as well and now we have another leadership race that's coming from an inside source as well. Maybe Patrick Brown's issue isn't that he's not a good politician. It's the people he surrounds himself with. And maybe he, the loyalty that you see with the Pierre camp, with the John Charest camp, with the Roman Babber, the Leslie Lewis, the Scott Aitchinson a uh, camp. They have loyalty to the candidates. It doesn't seem like there's loyalty to Patrick Brown. They're just in it for the ride to see if they can win the leadership, right? I'll let them answer that, but I can <laughs> tell that maybe it shows some of the men's, um, judge, some of the men's judge, ju the poor man's judgment skills. Let's put it that way. That's true. Um, the next section I want to talk about because we want to try and keep this going. Oh, can we just talk about how it's going to affect now? Yes, 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 yes. I completely forgot about that. That's crazy much. So where does Patrick Brown? So if I'm a Patrick Brown supporter who took out a membership for Patrick Brown, I've watched this campaign as close as possible. And I have seen the attacks that Pierre Polyev's camp and the Patrick Brown camps have been sparring back and forth. If I'm a Patrick Brown supporter today, do I go to Pierre Polyev and say, okay, it's no. a foregone conclusion? Or am I looking no. at a Jean Charest? Or am I looking at a Scott Aitchinson from Perry San Muskoki? Or am I looking at Leslie Lewis and Roman Babber? Am I looking at everyone but Pierre at this time? So we need to remember that it's one thing to elect a leader of a party. 
and to elect a leader in the prime minister seat. We need to consider electability. So who can win the 905 Eastern Ontario, Quebec, the Maritimes, some of Alberta and some of BC? There was one dude that can do it. It's Jean Charest. He can be the consensus candidate. That's one thing. Pierre, we don't know. There's been, I'm sorry, pardon my French, when there's been that pissing match about who sold the most memberships, oh, no, I sold 350. Oh, no, I, I, uh, with my numbers, I can win. And it's just been a match of who can pee the further away down the line and to try to hit the target. Like, it's just been so ludicrous between those two. Like, it was so childish. So, Charest. Charest is coming up as the mature, experienced, calm candidate in the storm. Lewis, there is no electability, electability here at national level. Baber is the same. Aitchison, love the guy, but he needs to raise his profile. He really does. At this point, his, he needs to elevate his profile and work on his brand. He's still young. So I think he needs to focus on that because if you remember, his video was like an F-150 commercial. That's That was the vibe that I was getting from. And I was like, as a conservative woman, I was like, trucks, yay. Um, but, you know, I think that Charest is going to be the consensus candidate because uh, the conservatives really need, it's one thing being angry at the government and doing a protest vote. But it's one thing voting someone in that could potentially damage or cause some harm to the situation that we're in. And I'm not alleging that Mr. Podiev, but Mr. Podiev's politics are a little, you know, it's more on the populist side. And he's been using, like I've said before, he's been using strong emotion, emotion loaded words. He's been, name me three pillars of his platform pierre polyevs yeah i'm gonna take uh your freedom back uh i really like a piece of lumber that's been reclaimed and um i like bitcoin <laughs> he but has it, no platform but in honesty i think his uh, platform is i want to uh stop mandates give you back your freedom of your uh, life. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure if that's a platform or just a saying that you can say and just hope for the best. And the last one, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, uh, scrap Bill C-11 with the Internet spot, Internet uh, Broadcasting Act. Yeah. There's, not, there's no substance. There's no plan for jobs. His economy policies are just going to tank the whole country's economy. There's some like Bitcoin. That's the biggest Ponzi scheme we've seen. Like, and why not give a, a little Timmy an NFT for his 50th birthday? Like, congratulations, you made it past 25. Here's an NFT for you, Timmy. No, we can't run on policies on unicorn and rainbows. We can't. Political ideologies are dangerous when they're not backed with real actions. Like we see Shahe, and like everybody's going to say, I'm a Shahe supporter. But no, I'm a political scientist. I can analyze platform. I'm like, okay, well, Shahe has a plan for immigration. Shahe has a plan on how we're going to be moving forward with COVID because there's not a wave that is coming our way on how we're going to be fighting that with keeping the country open. Shahe is going to be investing in healthcare. Shahe is going to be increasing health transfer. Shahe is going to be doing a lot of things. But all we see is, like, um, who did he walk, who did Podiev walked with last week? The the guy that walked James Toff, the military gentleman who walked from Vancouver the to... The guy set to appear in front of Marshall Court with the army. Like, 
It's it, frustrating. It certainly is. And I can imagine uh, be, I'm an outsider looking in, right? I have no skin in the game. I have no membership in this party. And uh, I'm looking on the outside looking in. And I can tell you that uh, I saw a poll earlier this today. I think it was actually probably about an hour and a half ago when I was just uh, relaxing, getting ready for this. And it said that Patrick Brown, going back to where we are, the Patrick Brown supporters, if he is disqualified, if he does not uh, get back on the ballot, which all signs point to, he won't be on the ballot. 44% of his supporters will be going to John Charest. And I think they said about 20%, like 2021. And I don't remember the poll. I think it was, uh, I, I wish I could pull it up right now and find it. And I, if, if you watched while I was, uh, Sarah was talking, I was trying to find it quickly, but I couldn't find it as quickly as I thought I could. But I think it said 21% would go to Pierre. Um, I, I got to ask the question, though, does this d does Patrick Brown dropping out affect the ultimate the end goal here? Uh, while we don't know what this race is going to be about, because you can sell three hundred eighteen thousand memberships. But if you sell five thousand of those memberships or fifty thousand of those memberships in Calgary, that means Jack Squat, if you didn't sell a hundred votes, a hundred memberships in all of Quebec, because Quebec has a lot more sway than all of the seats in Calgary. So does it matter where these votes go? I think it's going to, and I'm hoping, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that right now, I'm hoping it's going to play in Share's favor because before the vote for the moderate, the, you know, playing old blue PC kind of Mulroney style was split between Charin and Brown. Now what I'm seeing is what I'm hoping is going to happen is that we're going to start seeing a shift of people being like, oh, fuck. Well, okay. Um, one of the candidates gone now, so we really need to rally behind the other guy. So I'm hoping that even some, like what I find it sad is that I'm, I'm sad for Mr. Aitchison because his votes might be just going, people might be trying to vote strategically on that one. I'm sure there's a lot of strategy talks happening in the background at the moment to try to see and do the math. But if, you know what? I think that if Sheree said we're good to go, I, I think I'll take his word for it on this one. The the other thing that I want to know, and this could be something that you're not able to talk about, but I want to talk about it a little bit is because I saw it come up uh, earlier this morning, a political sign, a political observer who used to work in the leader of the official opposition under Aaron O'Toole's uh, Aaron, Aaron O'Toole for the conservative party of Canada said that um, Patrick Brown's name is still on the ballot. Yeah, so it's still on the ballot. It's still going to be... So the exact same thing happened with O'Leary. So O'Leary dropped on a Sunday night at 1 a.m. Yeah. The ballots were already mailed. So what's going to happen for first tour? We're just going to scrap it. It's it's not going to count. You don't think so? So people need... No, they're not going to be, if he's disqualified, they're not going to be voting. Those votes will, it's like canceling your vote at this point, really. So do you think it's the party should, do you think the party, because, because while they're still stuffing envelopes, they still haven't mailed out all these because they're still make, verifying people's addresses, I'm assuming. They're still ensuring, like as someone who has watched this from the inside looking out a few times, I can imagine yeah. this is going to be a shit show of epic proportions yeah. when you send out 600,000 memberships and 600,000 memberships have Patrick Brown's name on it. And people are wondering, well, I thought he was disqualified and he hasn't, he has, but he's still an option. Like, does the CB, the, the Conservative Party of Canada just not have to say, fuck it, pardon my French, but we're going to stop this. We're going to reprint all these new ballots because I, we want to make sure this is a transparent, but also a above 
board leadership race because right now if you send up 600,000 memberships and add someone's name on it who's not a candidate this far yeah. out from the leadership race uh, or election should you not be getting Sorry, I'm, I'm looking stuff? for I'm looking for numbers here from the 2017 when Sheer got elected so um I was on the O'Leary camp that year. And um, what happened that there's still people that voted for O'Leary on the first ballot. I think it was one or two percent. Because maybe he, he three came five in and endorsed Maxime Bernier, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't I can't talk about the endorsement itself. No, but he but, he, he endorsed uh, Maxine like the day after he dropped out, right? Yeah. So there's like right now they're scrambling. My guess is that Brown's not going to be winning this. I don't think there. I there's so much. We're living in a very unstable political climate right now where there's a lot of things happening in the background, a lot of things that people are not aware of. There's a lot of players that people never hear from. If I tell you a name, you don't even know who the dude is. Um, there's a lot of political actors in the background pulling the puppet strings right now. So what's going to be interesting to see is that if... Brown is going to be like, you know what, we're going to go. I think there there's a lot of dudes doing math tonight to try to figure out what's going to happen. And then we might see an endorsement later this week or next week. Do you think but so? Is it guaranteed? I know that Brown and Shari have a good relationship. Well, we all know that picture of Patrick Brown in his college dorm room with all the John Sheree signs. Right? We all saw that in the moment, like the yeah. you know, both both men announced their leadership. So I can imagine I know, there's I know. some talks going on behind the scenes right now. Yeah, there's. Uh, I I would say that there's a lot of uh, people scrambling to try to figure out what to do. My last question on this, and this is the one that I've been thinking about all day, is what's what's stopping Patrick Brown from saying, you know what, I sold 115,000 or 150,000 memberships for you, and now you have the balls to turn around and kick me out? Don't use those names. I know you can't because they signed up through the Conservative Party of Canada, but what's stopping him from sending an email to every one of those 150,000 saying, don't vote? They screwed us over. They don't want to have would, democracy. Like, is that his game plan? Or should he be looking at John Shrey or Scott and going, okay, for the safety of hurt. my own career in politics, because I want to run for MP one once again, I need to start throwing my hat behind one of these candidates right now before I look like a sore loser. I think... It would not be fair to the progressives, the longtime serving conservatives, for him to say such a thing. It would be extremely responsible. Because let's not forget that Mr. Poniev is appealing to a very, very loud minority. And we don't really have the numbers on who sold what. Um, the campaigns are shooting numbers, but who who do you believe? Who you know? You never know. Sorry. Been a long day. So when I'm it would not do any favor to the democratic system. Yeah, it sucks. It's like if somebody would if I would be like, oh hey, I'm gonna be running for the Liberal Party of Alberta, I submit my vet, I sell ten thousand memberships, then they're like, nah, you're not good enough for us. I take my ball and I go home. That's what you do. That's what a good soldier does, right? That's what a good soldier does. That's what does a good soldier the... does. And it is all within Brown's best interest to play the good soldier on that one. Yeah. 
it's going to be an interesting few weeks. Uh, I don't think he's done yet. I think he still thinks he's going to be on the final ballot. I think he thinks he's going to be the... Uh, he is on the final ballot, but his name is worth this much on the ballot right now, That's and it doesn't seem like the CPC is willing to track back their decision, to walk back their decision. That's true. And let's not forget, the CPC has a lot of money, so you can go in court as much as you want when the CPC has a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens, and we'll go from there. Um, to the I next to the next point, to the next point of order, and that is Boris Johnson what's, talking what's about what? Oh, good grief, Bojo! Bojo out in UK is having some troubling times here. Looking at it from an Albertan's perspective, it looks like a field day compared to what we we had going on for the last year and a half to where we are now. But let's talk. I about really it. wish I could make a joke right now, but I can't. Nope. Uh, but Prime Minister Boris Johnson earlier, uh, well, yesterday, uh, had the avalanche of resignations from his cabinet. From 21 his, yesterday. 21 yesterday. As of recording this, as of, uh, at last time I checked, and I'm not sure if there's been any since overnight in the UK, but 37. 37 Cabinet ministers, parliamentary assistants, trade convoys, backbenchers have said, we have no faith in the government, we're resigning from our positions, and they're going away, and they're going to sit as the backbenchers, backbenchers. This comes literally a week and a half, almost two weeks, from the last time that the uh, Boris Johnson was under a leadership review, which he won with 60% of the vote, less than Elizabeth May. I will put it out there that he won with less than uh, Elizabeth May. Um, Boris Johnson is looking like a defeated prime minister. Um, what's your thoughts on what's happening in the UK? I know it's not Canada, and I know we always don't. We like to try and stay uh, uh, municipally, but or Canadian. Yeah, but fine. Boris, this, know, what's really going on there is quite interesting, in my opinion. You know, it's in those moments where I would wish that Queen Elizabeth would really get involved in government's business. So Bojo, if we remember, back in 2018 with Brexit, I was going to say Wexit, but it's Brexit, um, threatened, so he had like 18 members resigning or something like that. So <clears throat> he threatened to call a snap on them if they were not aligning with the party line or his party line. So what we're seeing now is that he's probably trying to pull a 2018 again. But what could in theory happen, because we are with the Westminster Parliament and the Queen is head of state. Yeah. So if Bojo says, fuck you guys, sorry, I shouldn't swear. Sorry, sorry to my boss. Sorry, hey, I swore. Hey, um, I, I won't I won't say anything. <laughs> don't 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 tell. Um he could go to the queen and be, your majesty, I wish to dissolve the parliament. And the queen you say, could say, you know what? No, you wait. Nope. I'm forcing you back in the house. And you need to face the consequences. So, you know, I really wish, because, you know, Queen Elizabeth's 96 now. I really wish she was my grandma, by the way. I love that woman to death. Um, you Charles, not I so much. Both you and I both. God, long live I, the queen. I, I love this. Uh, she's a queen. She's she's, you know, she did some stuff was shady, but you know, she's a remarkable woman. I, I will say, I this. really wish she's... who hasn't done things shady. We're in politics. Everyone, everything's shady. But you know, she worked extremely hard. She really devoted her life to. A service she served during World War II. Anyways, she's seen how many prime ministers? Like 25. Um, I really wish, and that would be a once in a lifetime moment if you think about it. That would be the first time for an, over a hundred years where a sitting monarch would be like, no, you know what? Nah, -uh. I'm not giving you that one. Go back and deal with your issues. Yeah. And I really wish, because 
let's be honest. She's 96 years old. She doesn't have another 20 years to go. Right? Well, unless she lives like, as really long as her mother did. Well, you know, they have good genes in the family, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But... So I, I, really I just would... did a quick tally. Sorry, I do want to interrupt. I said 41 had resigned. As of right now, 44 have resigned. And as of this, like, last 25 minutes, about, like, 40 He's minutes ago, done. Uh, done. Boris Johnson just kicked out Michael Grove, who Michael Grove ran against Boris Johnson for the leadership in 2017 after Theresa May stepped down. Um, Boris Johnson does not look like he's probably going to survive probably going into the week. Uh, not going to, he's not going to survive the night. I think, That's where we're at. I think he'll survive the night. I think he's going to call a snap election, like he said, but I don't think the queen would ever say, I'm not going to give it to you. I think he's going to go to the election and the conservatives are going to get I hope turfed. he loses. I but, hope he gets Go ahead. We called it. He's getting turfed, either by Queen Elizabeth or by the electorate. But I really wish, like I was going to say, Queen Elizabeth has a chance. She won't listen to us. But here's what I have to say. I really hope that she goes with a bang and that she does what is needed to be done because the monarch role is more, it's performative, it's ceremonial, it's, you know. But she has the duty to intervene if she feels like the country or she can give very strong worded advice. Yep. And she has done that in the past. Uh, it's her constitution, constitutional, well, they don't have a constitution, so what's Mr. Sis? She should be doing something. Let's just, I, I hope she does something. It's going to be I, interesting to see what. I think you're probably going to, we're probably going to an election in the UK. It's going to be an interesting few months. I think you're probably going to see an election. It's not an election. Exactly. Hey, Israel's going to one in November. Everyone loves elections in this god dang world. Um, I'm tired. I am too, but it's always fun. I, I, Boris Johnson is probably going to be walking and uh, taking a long walk in the snow tonight, as the, to quote our famous Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau on the eve of his uh, resignation. But. I will say this, Boris Johnson, if you're, you, you have any comeuppance or any issue, just go away. <laughs> you're hurting the United Kingdom more than you're helping because if you're looking at what's going on in the UK, the longer the Conservative Party starts infighting, the longer the Conservative Party doesn't have a strong prime minister at the top of the helm, Scotland is heading to be a independent country by the end of next year. So longer Boris Johnson stays on, the quicker Scotland becomes a uh, independent nation in my humble opinion. Yeah. So, we'll see what's going to happen. So we are pro we are at our almost at our half hour mark and I, I, I almost at our hour mark. I have one last topic to talk about and that is the close to home. Uh, that is our famous open for summer, not open for summer 2.0 because we didn't actually declare it this time. Calgary Stampede starts this Friday. That's right. If you haven't already got your tickets, make sure you get out there. I will try to be out as much as possible, but uh, due to some issues, I'm going to probably stay home a lot. Uh, but the parade starts this Thursday. Be down downtown Calgary if you're in the Calgary area. Highly recommend you do it. Sarah, are you looking forward to this beautiful once in a lifetime greatest show, greatest outdoor show in the world? Calgary Stampede 2022. Do you know how many Stampede parties kick off? I need to attend this morning. Seven. Seven. Yeah. So, so, so not eight. So there you go. Eight is enough. Seven. Oh, I, I have a business dinner after that, so that's gonna be great. Because you know, I, I, it is what it is. But um, I, I, I hope that won't won't affect the healthcare system because kids, please remember, if you hit your head 
because you drank too much at Nashville North, it's not guaranteed that an ambulance is going to be showing up on time. I'm going to leave it at that. And I, I completely agree on that one. Uh, I do wish everyone the safety and a safe. Sorry, and at, at this point, it's like, what is there to say other than stay, you think, be careful, be responsible, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And go get some great pancakes. Be, go get some great pancakes. Like, go eat a corn dog or something. Like, not the time to fracture your skull at Nashville North this year, guys. Not this time to have a drug overdose, alcohol poisoning, or name it. Carry a Narcan kit if you can, because that will help. Yeah. Because there are going to be resources on site, but this this year is the year to be responsible. You know, we're living the land of personal responsibility. Yep. This year is the time to be responsible. I agree. Let's leave it at. I will leave it at that. Um, I will say this for my last uh, outing, though. Um, be sure to get out and just enjoy this nice weather. We are expected to get some nicer weather over the next few days. We have been getting rain here in the, the Cowboy City. So please enjoy yourself, but please be safe. And if you don't feel like you're safe, go home, uh, reach out, call someone that you can rely on because... We want everyone to enjoy their uh, their uh, festivities this year. And please, Absolutely. for the love of God, I'm going to say this with respect and um, some notoriety. If you're an asshole who's about to go roofie someone during the stampede and take advantage of them, don't even fucking go to stampede this year. You have no right to be there and you should be freaking just slapped across the face there's my last rant on that um with that sarah thank you so much for doing this i always leave on a positive note on these shows eh? you will see me at the grounds or you know traveling from one party to the other tomorrow night i'll be hopping party hopping tomorrow night well, uh, we look reasons. forward to it. I will look forward to seeing the reports from the non-named campaign that we're not talking about right now. now can you imagine I've been here 16 years this week? Yeah. It'll be 16 years in Alberta. I um, do not own cowboy boots. I do not own a cowboy hat. And I need to buy um, little House on the Prairie themed dresses tomorrow to try to fit. Is there a special shout yeah. out you want to do to some local stores who might have some great Western wear? Hey, people, please call me because <laughs> this girl here is always dressed with Madame Premier stuff. Sorry, I'm going to do shameless. I, I love Sarah's stuff. Um, or Sophie Grace. That's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing two local businesses pretty much all the time. Sophie Grace and Madam Premier. It's all I'm wearing. Or House of Costco when I'm on, on Mommy Judy. That's better notch. than me. It's the House of Amazon Basic and Old Navy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, being a mom is glorious. Being a strategist is glorious. I buy my t-shirts at Costco. It's fun. So with that, if you know of someone who has some Western wares that Sarah would look amazing in over the Stampede week, please reach out to Sarah on Twitter because she would love to have some uh, different opinions than Costco, the land of Costco. Not saying Costco's not great, but Costco's not a sponsor. So, um, so with that, this has been Point of Order on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Sarah Biggs, thank you so much. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, yeah. everyone, get out from behind social media and go have a conversation with somebody. It does make our society yeah. better. Talk to you later.